Happy morning, I'm Paige. This is the Happy Kitchen, where anyone can be a great cook. And today we're making gluten-free chicken pot pie filling, delicious, creamy potatoes, chicken, corn, carrots, the whole shebang, except for the crust. This is kind of like uh, my cheater way of having something delicious, but it's really easy and pretty simple. So let's get started. But first, coffee. started chopping our veg. We've got to do one sweet onion, lots of gold potatoes, some rainbow carrots, and then we're going to cheat with some freezer corn. And then we're also going to boil our chicken on the stove and then that gets shredded and thrown in at the end. Let's get to it. All our vegetables are chopped. I'm making a big batch today because I got some stuff on sale in value sizes. So I like to do this meal in like a big batch and freeze a little bit and then eat on it for a couple of days as well. It's kind of our favorite thing to do with this meal. And I also forgot to mention, we're making it dairy free as well on top of being gluten free. So because it's such a big batch, that means Breaking out the big skillet. And get out a big pot to boil your chicken. You obviously can make this in a smaller batch so you can do like a third of what you see here and just a single chicken breasts instead and divide everything into thirds or you can half it, whatever you like. Uh, this recipe is really nice because you can add whatever you want in that you would like. So if you want to add some rutabaga or parsnips or anything like that, have it. All right, so we're going to get this heated up. We're going to put it at about a little over medium heat. And we're going to split our fats. So we're going to do about two tablespoons of avocado oil. We're also going to do two tablespoons of vegan butter. We're going to make sure this gets nice and hot before you put your onions in. 
You can see the oil is starting to get hot, so we're gonna test it out. Not hot enough. If your onion doesn't immediately make noise when you throw it in, you wanna give it a little bit longer. Now that it's bubbling, throw the rest in. While the onions start cooking away, we're gonna get out our better than bouillon vegetable base. This is gonna be part of our sauce that's going to form. This is a big batch, so I'm gonna get about two tablespoons out. Throw some hot water over that, get our base started. Alright, now that the, everything's heating up, you can tell I've turned my heat down just a little bit closer to medium now. And we're going to throw our carrots and our potatoes in and we're going to season. Whoa! Avalanche! Alrighty, I think I made enough. Get a little excited sometimes. Didn't look like quite this much on the pan. Noel's coming to help me clean up the carrots. Thank you, Nolabi. Because I did such a big batch, I'm going to kind of season as I stir. So I'm going to season them a little bit, stir, season more. Your base seasonings are going to be garlic, sage, a little bit of Italian seasoning as well. I have some bulk thyme, and then of course, some salt and pepper. Because I am doing just a chicken pot pie filling, I'm not going to be putting this in the oven. If you are doing a crust with this filling, you're not gonna cook it for as long because you're going to finish cooking it in the oven with the crust. Uh, we are going to finish it on the stove. So it's essentially one pot, except for the fact that we're gonna do our boiled chicken in here. A nice cheater way to do it is to buy like a rotisserie chicken and break it up. That way you don't have to cook your chicken and then it really is one pot. Next up is we're going to essentially make a roux, which is a fat in here and then a flour on top. So I've used a white flour or white rice flour before in this and it works really well. Um, I have a one-to-one -one gluten free baking flour today and this is going to help thicken the sauce that we're gonna create. Now, if you had a smaller batch of this, you're gonna coat just the top in a thin layer. I have quite a bit of substance in here, so I'm gonna go a little bit heavier. Make sure you stir well to combine everything. Make sure it's all evenly coated. Next up is our vegetable base. I've got a cup here and we put in the two tablespoons of the base and dissolved it. I'm 
I'm gonna do one more tablespoon and about uh, two thirds of a cup of water in here. So if you were doing a third of this recipe, you would do one tablespoon of the base and about two thirds of a cup of hot water on top. I've said it before, but cooking is all about observation. It's less precise than baking, and it's really more so creating something that you like. So if you like something more, add more of that. If you don't like something, leave it out. And you're more so trying to make sure that you're replicating what it looks like. So is it looking similar to this, even if your ratios are a little bit different? So you can see there's a little bit of liquid at the bottom. It's starting to thicken. And the idea with the vegetable base is we're gonna cook it through until there's not much liquid left, or at least it's very thickened and it's all sticking to your veggies. And then we're gonna go in with our cream. All right, even though this is not yet cooked, I'm gonna try a little piece of carrot and see if I need to add any more salt and pepper or other seasonings. Mmm, that's very good. I'm gonna do a little more salt and pepper. All right, and you can see as I'm stirring, essentially the gravy part of the sauce is nice and thickened, and there's really no more liquid left. Next, we're gonna go in with our milked cashews. If you're not doing dairy-free, you can absolutely just go in with some traditional milk. I'm going to pour by eyeball. I wanna have enough liquid that it's quite liquidy so that when it reduces, it creates enough sauce for all the potatoes and the carrots, but also the chicken that's going to go in there. I'm gonna add even just a little bit more. I want there to be, this is about what I want it to look like when it's finished, except for thicker. So I'm gonna add more so that when it reduces down, it's nice and creamy. That's about what I want it to look like. And I'm initially gonna cover this and let it cook covered. That way everything gets nice and soft and then we'll uncover at the end. This is what it should look like. I've turned the heat down just a little bit because I want it to keep bubbling but not get more vigorous than this. We're gonna let it simmer so that the carrots and potatoes are getting nice and softened and fully cooked and then we'll come back in a minute to uncover. I also started my chicken. I've got three large chicken breasts in my pot covered with water and I've got it on high. As soon as it comes to a boil I'm going to set a timer. The pigment from the purple carrots came off on one of the potatoes. Cute! Nope, not yet. All right, because they're not softened yet, I'm gonna cover back up. Let it simmer a little bit longer. All right, my potatoes and carrots are almost as soft as I want them to be. So I'm going to 
pull the lid off. I'm gonna allow them to finish cooking with the lid off. And that's going to allow some of the um, steam to escape and it'll reduce down our liquid just a little bit and it'll thicken it, create a really nice sauce. All right, my sauce has thickened up and it's still very hot. So once it cools down just a little bit, like enough to eat it, it's gonna be even thicker than it is right now. This stuff is so good. You'd have no idea that it's dairy-free or gluten-free except for the fact that there's no pie crust. So I hope that you make this and enjoy a delicious, cozy fall meal. Even though in Phoenix it doesn't feel like fall yet, I'm embracing the fall. I'm going to pretend like it's not hot outside and start cooking like it is fall. If you have any questions for me on this recipe, please leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to help. I already pulled some out to cool, that way I can throw it in the freezer. I love making big batches. Obviously, I made a lot of food today, but I'm super excited because I love putting stuff in the freezer, being able to just pull it out and have a delicious meal. I actually, last week, did a video of some of my favorite freezer meals, so if you wanna see that, go check that out. And then on her Friday, I make a gluten-free recipe video just like this one, or just like the freezer meals last week. So if you wanna see more of those, please subscribe and join the Happy Kitchen family. Thank you so much for watching. Have a happy day.